everyone, my name is Doc and I am one of the founders of The Hood Collective and in today's video we're going to be looking at the top six reasons why your cannabis branding isn't working. Assuming that you have a competent business that is, you know, functioning, I can think of no single element that is more important to the success of your business than your brand. Your brand is the face of your company. It is what people see every time they interact with you. Um, and so if your branding isn't strong, if it isn't working, your company is really gonna have a hard time. It doesn't matter how good your product is. It doesn't matter how smart you are, how much time you've put into developing the best cannabis in the world. If your brand is not up to snuff, then you're gonna struggle and it's gonna be an uphill climb. And so today we're gonna be looking at six of the most common reasons why your branding is not working. Number one on the list and the most important thing that I think you have to do as you're developing your brand in the very beginning is uh, a failure to identify your value proposition. What that means is your value proposition is what is it about your product or service that separates it from your competitors? Um, what, is it, what is the value you are providing for your customer? Um, is it, you know, I'll give you some examples. Is it that you're cheaper than your competitors? Is it that at your price point you have the best quality? Is it that you offer top-notch customer service that they're not going to find anywhere else? Is it that you're solving a problem that no one else is solving or that you are uniquely positioned to solve for them? I'll give you one example. I, I have a client, um, I'm not gonna say their name, <laughs> their current client that I really like working with, but they came to us and they said, we are the Louis Vuitton of you know, our product category. I was like, oh, that sounds good. That's really fancy, that's, you know. But then everything about their branding said that at best they were the Walmart of their of, you know of the industry and and they didn't see <laughs> the truth about themselves because they were not investing in their packaging they were not investing in their branding they didn't have a consistent message their their website was not very good their you know you know every different you know they had all these products that had different branding and different packaging and and it was all kind of low quality and 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 so they saw themselves or wanted to see themselves as this premium product um, but everything about their branding said otherwise and so you really need to figure out you know if that's who you want to be the louis vuitton of x then you need to have a brand that represents that. Um, if you want to be the Walmart, there's nothing wrong with being the Walmart. Walmart is a very successful company, um, but it means they're efficient. That means that they have high quality every time and they have a great price point, you know? And if that's what you want to convey, then that's what your branding should be. That feeds into the next problem that I see over and over again, and that is inconsistent branding, you know? Um, I, I know one, um, you know, one client here in Oregon, they have a beautiful package for their pre-rolls. It's amazing, but it's the only piece <laughs> of their product line, of their branding that has that very high quality. It's an important piece and that's important, but um, in so many other aspects of their brand, it isn't meeting that quality. And so when your brand is inconsistent, it's the lowest point that people are gonna associate with your brand. And so if over here you're looking great and over here you're looking bad, well, that inconsistency. Or even if I'm looking good here and I'm looking good here and I'm looking good here, but all three of them are different, that's bad branding as well. You wanna be consistent. You wanna know who you are and you wanna be consistent in how you present yourselves. Next, along the same lines, um, companies that don't know who their target audience is. Um, it's a, you know, the same thing, the same analogy with the, the Louis Vuitton of weed um, can apply to the audience. If, if you're telling your audience we are the Louis Vuitton, 
but your customers are more interested in like, well, I don't want to spend a lot of money. I want, I just want the cheapest weed. Then, then you know, that's a problem. And, and that could be that you're a dispensary in a part of town that isn't going to support that kind of upscale, you know, <laughs> price point and branding or, you know, whatever it is. It's really important that you identify who your target customer is and then you present your brand to them in a way that's going to appeal to them. And um, too often I see brands and, and companies that are more interested in what they want to tell their audience, their customer, and not at all really interested in what they want to know. What, is, what are the questions your customers have? You know, a lot of times it's just like, which one is cheapest? Um, but even if you know that 90% of the market only cares about the price and the THC levels, well, okay, I'm gonna be in this tier. I need to have a brand that's going to out compete all the other brands in that tier. So know what your tier is and then make sure your brand fits that and, and, and it conveys I'm quality and at the correct price point for your audience. Uh, another big problem that I'm running into and why I'm creating these videos and trying to help people before they make these same mistakes, a lot of brands are coming to us, you know, after they've been in operation for quite a while and they didn't invest in their brand to begin with. And that's why their branding's not working is, is they didn't create the logo, the packaging, the website, um, whatever the elements of their brand are, they didn't invest in it at the beginning. And so it becomes very difficult to try to fix it when you're, you know, halfway down the, the mountain. Um, and so it's really important. I hope that you're watching this video before your branding has become a problem. Because if, if you're coming to it after like, oh, why is our brand not succeeding? Like the title of the video. Um, you've already lost half the battle. Now it's not too late. You can always undergo a rebrand, but it's going to cost. And if you've already invested in a bad logo, in bad packaging, in a bad website, now you're spending that money again and it's too bad. But the brand is so important and so it's worth the investment. It's more important than almost any other thing you're going to invest in. And so hopefully you're going to invest in it from the very beginning. Number five, I got a little bit ahead of myself, but I'm going to bring it up again as its own point because it's so important. You must look at your brand through the eyes of your customers. And if you don't do that, there's going to be a disconnect. And so look at what your customers are seeing instead of <laughs> what you want them to see and be realistic and get advice and work with, you know, vendors and marketers and designers that, that know what they're doing and, and, you know, consult a lot of people as you're coming up with your brand. And we can, I'm going to keep coming back to this example, but when you are thinking of yourselves as the Louis Vuitton of, of weed, but your customers are looking at you as the, <laughs> is the knockoff brand, um, there's a disconnect and I see it all the time. And so really be honest about, you know, what your logo is, how, how it's going to be perceived, how your packaging is going to be perceived, um, and, and make that investment. The last um, point, the last problem is, is the uh, failure to differentiate yourself. Um, and you, you could spend a lot of money on your brand and your branding, um, but if it just looks like everyone else, then you, you haven't really done a good job. It looks professional, but it's the same as everyone else. And that one on the shelf that is different is going to have an advantage. Um, so that means, you know, avoid cannabis leaves in your logo, avoid the color green, <laughs> avoid the tropes of, of, you know, um, you know, legacy cannabis culture before it was legal. I, I think you know what I'm talking about. Be unique, be bold, be different. Um, you know, set yourselves apart and set yourselves apart in the way 
that you want to so that you are unique to who you are and conveying what will appeal to your customers. So that kind of wraps, you know, it, it, it all ties together. All those six points that we've been through, they all, you know, feed onto each other. And um, if, if you're failing at one, you're probably failing at a few others. And, and so I encourage you all, take this time, you're watching this video all the way to the end. I congratulate you. It means you're serious about your brand. Take the time, invest the time, and probably the resources into um, creating a strong, unique brand that's gonna res resonate with your customers. Um, thanks for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below or reach out to, to us directly through our website. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time and hopefully I'll see you again. Thanks.